that's a that's a fresh Woo. that's a fresh coat right there. Looks pretty good. We're yeah. we're, we're we're covering some of the crown molding. It's but. a lot grayer, bluer down here than it was before. Welcome to the Joystick Show, yep. episode seventy five. Uh, Three quarters of the way there. It's looking pretty down here, I gotta say. Oh, yeah, like very uh, uh, studio apartment vibes. Right, kind of yeah. chill. Yeah. Definitely, I, de- I definitely like the uh, that we no longer have flesh tone walls. Oh yeah, I will, I always never agree with that. Like, It'll be much easier to uh, edit skin tones now in mm-hmm. Premiere. It's, I'm, I'm very interested to see how that'll come out. I would love to just make us the Blue Man Group. You know, yeah, maybe I will yeah. this episode. <laughs> maybe that's where this is going. You know, or just like you know. But like, before we get on a tangent like we usually do on this fucking show, welcome yeah. to the Joystick Show. Yes. I am your host Bobby Rosario with my illustrious co-host <laughs> Dylan, as always, almost. Yeah. And uh, we're here to provide you some entertainment and some uh, education. For the next hour, <laughs> some edutainment. Look at that. Already I, using. I the still word. can't. I still can't say it. Can't, we'll get it. Don't worry. Uh, by like uh, by episode seventy eight, you'll get it down packed. You'll be saying it every fucking episode. Edutainment. <laughs> and uh, you know what? We're gonna try something different this week. Yeah. Over. Uh, regular YouTube mumbo jumbo. Leave us a like if you if you enjoy what we're doing here at the channel. Yeah, it helps up, us a as great always. deal. We're trying yeah. to get up those numbers. Uh, I also comment down. Well, hold on. I'll get to that in a second. Go ahead and hit that bell. Stay up to date with us. We're doing something new. You want to hit us up with a subscribe if you want to keep, you know, see yeah. what we're doing. And get catch that, other, hit the bell so you get a notification on that, on that, on that flip phone of yours. Already said that, but you know, had to had hit to the bell. Reiterate. We but, haven't said that yet. But <laughs> switching it up this week. Yeah. I want you to comment down below what your uh, favorite cartoon growing up was, because we will be talking a little bit about cartoons today. And I think it's interesting to have the comment real early on so that we can get that conversation yeah. started. Everyone down below immediately, they're yeah. writing. So get that shit started. They're writing nothing on the Disney Channel. All right. You ready to crack into this? Yeah. Be- I think like the an first, egg? Can I just address one thing real yeah. quick? I want to address the, the new studio look. Yeah. It is painted down here. So I just want to apologize for two things. Three things, actually. Let's start with the, uh, the least worrisome thing. The first thing. The acoustic panels are uh, not gone, but they're taking a small hiatus. As they're not you here. Know, we were painting the walls. They're not. They're not. So with us right uh, now. I would like to apologize for any in audio. My, in, my, in my head, they're on vacation in Cabo. If there's any audio differences in that regards, I do apologize. Yeah. Secondly, I would also like to apologize if there's any crackling or buzzing in the audio, because as we found out at the beginning of last week's episode and the beginning of this week's episode, our mixer is just fucking dying. You know, our our mixer got COPD. <laughs> like, our I'm, mixer honestly. is really fucking struggling, and yeah. I think it's time that we uh, unfortunately have to shell out some money and get a replacement. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we gotta fix that pretty soon so that it doesn't get worse before it gets better. And last but not least, if the colors look weird on camera, you know the lighting is yeah. kind of new. So just give us a little. I feel bit like of every slack. week, you know, every week there'll be like a new addition. You exactly. Know? They'll be like, oh, the panels are back, and, and then that, a new table, and, and then this, and no, and, then, and that yeah. was the last thing I wanted to say is this isn't the final look. No, like, this hell is no. very far from it. I don't even know when we'll achieve it. I'm sure it'll be like probably in the 80s by this pace, but. We have plans to get a new table. I don't think this table call off really fits the scheme anymore. Has some paint. Has like <laughs> it has stuff from like five different segments. Bro, word. <laughs> like eight different bodily fluids. It's, like it has everything. It's you know, crazy. Bro. It has candle wax probably. Yeah, yeah. you're not even wrong. It's disgusting. It's probably like fucking tomato yeah. sauce from the pizza. Episode. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Fucking Great. ash, icing, paint, uh, everything, bro. Fucking paint, ash, fucking candle wax, <laughs> juice, soda. It's crazy. Anyway. Enough about our gross uh, tablecloth <laughs> habits. The point is, the studio will be complete at some point, but we're still making additions. We're still getting there, but yeah. that's kind of the fun part of it, and that's what we're in right now. So besides studio yeah. stuff, what you been up to, my friend? Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. You never asked that. That's weird. I never ask you what you've I'm been being up to. I'm being ironic. You always oh, ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, all, yes. you almost got yes. me there I'm for being, a I'm being a little facetious, you're, as they say. You're a silly goose. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, the silliest. You're a goof. <laughs> No, um, I was, you know, I'm rewatching some old podcasts because, um, you know, I'm currently working on a segment, right? Mm. Yeah. Oh, like our our podcast. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like just in general. No, no. It's, okay. It's, yeah, a, it's yeah. a segment regarding things that maybe we have said in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I want to wait to. I'm basically. It's essentially done. You're just waiting till I'm you waiting know, until there's the like rest three, of the yeah. team shows. So up. it's like I have some like surprisingly some very funny Jerry and Joey shit. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? They they like they. They pop off occasionally, you know, yeah. but um, as I listen to like what we've been up to, 
I realized that I'm not really utilizing my time correctly mm -hmm. in some things, you know? Mm -hmm. I said some things about playing some video games and watching some reality shows. That's not... I mean, there's nothing wrong not, with that, but you it's know, you funny. Find it's the fun balance, stuff. You know, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's what I've learned. And I've started to, you know, do more shit. I went to a hockey game. Nice. My first hockey game since I was like seven or eight, I think. You're going to talk about what you did before the hockey game? Is that... Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh, did I jump the goose a little bit? Like, Maybe. Gotcha. A lot of geese this episode. <laughs> um, no. Uh, so before going to the hockey game, I went to a Jamaican restaurant. And let's just say this restaurant is fucking beautiful. Okay. It's like high ceilings, chandelier shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is in a neighborhood in Queens, as much Jamaican restaurants are, not the best of neighborhoods, let's yeah, just yeah. say. Uh, I was I was very out of what place. What neighborhood was it, by the way? Uh, it was like Rockdale. I don't know where that is. Yeah, it's like it's like Springfield Gardens, Rockdale, oh, okay, yeah. South Jamaica. Got it, got it. And it's got it, like got that it, whole it. region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so we go in. First off, immediately upon driving into the parking lot, I see that there is a uh a store in a uh it's like a it's like a mini shopping mall area. You know what I mean? Like a mini mall kind of. Yeah, yeah. Just like a mini mall. Mm. Um <laughs> and as the car was pulling in, I'm like, is that a store named Bad Bed Bath and Etc.? <laughs> In like in oh my God. in 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 like the shittiest skinny oh red font too, like like the littlest thing. And I'm like, oh and it's all like knockoff stores. Like it's oh like a it's God. like a 99 cent store it's that next isn't to a bullseye. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's a there's like a bunch of like you know knockoff stores. Oh, and man. I'm like, I I really want, and I couldn't find it on like Google Maps. Bro, I, can we get sponsored by Bed Bath? I went on Google please? Maps, and I don't, and I don't see it. So I think the store is actually named something else, okay. and like that's like a goof or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. But anyways, fucking Jamaican food fucking slaps. I did not know that. Like it's so good. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I was the only white person. Let's just say that. Okay. I'll, I'll be frank. Yeah. Frank also being a white name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, <laughs> but uh, I then uh, we went after that. I went to uh, the hockey game. All white people. I was about to say probably a lot of white. A people lot of there. white ice, white people, white everything. Yeah, chance. You know, and I don't know if you know, but like in a hockey game, when the team scores, the thing about the the if people don't know about hockey, the each team has their own goal horn, mm -hmm. and it's like a big deal. Like there's good bull, there's good horns, there's bad horns. Yeah, but uh, essentially this, you know, it's a it's a boat essentially horn, mm -hmm. and uh, very loud chants. I I'm like I'm like about to buy season tickets. Like that's nice. how how much of a good time I had. That's awesome. And I had uh the seats I had were one row away. I saw the pictures. So it was so like there, close. and then it was a VIP section. Yeah, with like maybe four folding chairs. Crazy. Which I just imagine. Imagine buying VIP tickets. To sit in a and folding you sit chair. in a folding chair, like you're right up against the ice. They're like they're like talking to the players, and hockey isn't loud. Mm -hmm. Like there's some ice skating noises, but it's not a loud arena. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like when you're playing, people you definitely hear the crowd. So I want to go to a hockey game and start just just laying it into people. Because when you're at a baseball game, you're like high yeah, up, high like up. it's like eh. And I think I realized that you know, the guy that was sitting next to us, we uh, he went away for like. The whole first period almost mm -hmm. and we saw that no one was sitting in the row in front of us so we just sat the first row yeah and the guy came back he's like oh you got upgraded and i'm like yeah, yeah like you know it's a jo funny joke and he's like i'm gonna be honest with you he's like i'm here every night he he's season he's like he's been a season ticket holder yeah, since yeah. the 90s wow which i'm like damn right that's a lot of money that's invested commitment yeah and he doesn't even like he sits down he doesn't even like he talks right yeah, it's like yeah. you know and he was like i've seen people in those chairs maybe twice <laughs> and I'm like, that's wild. Yeah. That there's a season ticket holder that maybe they're in like the box or something or they just don't show up. Yeah, that's crazy. Which is crazy. And now I'm thinking, I'm like, I want to buy seats in that row, but all the way back and then just move up <laughs> and be like, yo, guys. Yeah, because you know up? nobody's going to Yeah, because I know no them. one's there. And they like, they don't like, they check what row you're in, but they don't check what, like, what seat. Yeah. So yeah, you could yeah. always like, or like, they check with the section, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they make sure you're right. And also, I think that the Barclays Center could learn a thing. Okay. It's so, funny because this is where I'm segueing yeah. into, but go ahead. And I'm sure they did this at the Barclays Center, right, At when they had hockey there because the Islanders played there for four mm -hmm. years. But um, during a hockey game, you are not allowed to sit down. 
I'm confused. So, like, you know when you're at a basketball game and you're yeah. watching the basketball game and there's a really cool play happening and eight people decide to get up in the middle of play and walk and block oh, and yeah, walk yeah, in front yeah, of yeah. you? You can't do that in a hockey game. Okay. They do not let you walk to your seat when the game's going on. They technically do that at Barclays Center, but they don't but, do no, it well. But, like, they have a giant stop sign like oh, this shit. thing. Okay. And they're, like, you literally, there's a, not only is there a guy blocking you, but there's an entire sign that is preventing you from walking nice. down to your seat. Because how it works at the Barkley Center is you're technically not allowed to go to your seat until the whistle's blown. Yeah. Until, like, this timeout that's, that's what they, yeah, 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 yeah. But fucking, I think what it is is they don't really follow that rule unless it's, like, a big, like, a playoff game or anything like that. Because yeah. my dad and I go to a lot of games during the season, which is, again, what I'm about to talk about. Yeah. But they never really do that to us. They just kind of let us in whenever, and we just kind of sneak in. You're super right. Like, at the Barkley Center, yeah, you can do whatever and, the fuck and, you want. Yeah, and uh, I just, and, like, I don't know. Maybe it's also because it's, like, a new arena, too. Like, I also didn't realize that, how cool it is to be in an arena that was literally finished in November. Yeah. You know, and, like, everything's fucking brand new. It's like that's insane, and it's really good for the Islanders too, because like out of any fan base, they've had like a really hardcore fan base. You know, it's kind of like the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, it's like you're you're heads. you're making a team out of like a suburb essentially, yeah. you know, and you're making it work. Um, but yeah, I'm you know I realize I'm doing that. I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on like schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm making music now, yeah. which by the way, guitar is hard, man. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't played as much as I used to. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I'm like missing shit, you know. But now I'm I'm good again. So. Cool. We're good. What have you been up to? What you, you've already I said can it. talk now. You literally already said it's it. It's my turn. This is great. Yeah. I was going to say that uh, my father and I have been frequenting a lot of basketball games. I think love some bonding. It's really cool because we bought tickets early on. So we've seen uh, five games now in this season. Uh, was it five? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, actually. And I was talking to him the other day while we were at the game, just the amount of talent that we've gotten to see at the Barclays Center in the past year because we went to two playoff games last That's year. That's what I was going to say. I'm definitely going to some playoff games. So, I'm yeah. definitely going. So, you know, I was talking to my dad. Last year's playoffs, we went to go see the Celtics, and we went to go see the Bucks. So we got to see Giannis. We got to see uh, Chris Middleton. We got to see Jason Tatum. Yeah, the whole team. Exactly. Yeah. Not only that. Uh, this season we got to go see the first team we go we got to go see was Golden State. So, we got so to see oh you Steph, see, yeah yeah the whole fucking whole everybody except which play. is I like how I like that strategy because my strategy is I often try to go against the bad team because I want to see my team fucking win. I just want to see but, some high talent. But shit, but yeah. you, that's a better for a better experience. That's and you're right. you guys is, are right. They, they smoked us that game but, by like twenty points. But it was Steph saw, Curry. Yeah. We got to see this motherfucker hit threes from like forty feet away. Like it was nothing because that's what he does. Yeah, it's insane. That's, yeah. And Besides he's like that, that motion too. It's like you you came with us when we went to go see the Cavs. Oh, the Cavs. Game. Yeah, we that that Cavs sucks. So I'm happy. But we had to see Rubio. Yeah. You know, we saw the Magic game. Uh, we saw the Clippers. We saw the Knicks, which was probably, believe it or not, the hypest game we oh, went for, to. Because yeah. to be Rivalry. there with yeah. it's just New York. You're just Rival. surrounded by New Yorkers who fucking want to fight each yeah, other. Yeah, it's and, a, and it's, it's like uh, you know, and especially like uh, I kind of want to go to like the Ranger Islander game for that specific yeah. reason. Which, by the way, I like both of those teams. And mm -hmm. same with the Knicks and Nets. I like the Nets more for sure. Yeah, I've yeah. always did, even when they're in New Jersey. Jersey yeah. Um, but I just I want to do that <laughs> just to be that guy and yeah, yeah. not get into a fight, but just to be like. <gasps> But, but where I'm getting to here is, last but not least, uh, this past <coughs> Tuesday, my father and I went to our last game. Well, not our last game of the season. But, but the ones the, that you bought. Oh, we bought yeah. yeah. And it was the first one we bought. We went to go see the Nets play the Lakers, which was Ooh. a big, big deal. Which I feel like at any point in time since, like, the 90s right. is, like, that's the team to see, you know? Mm -hmm. The Lakers, right? Even even bad Kobe was, And, like, and LeBron, really right? Like, it, it was the first time I ever got to see him play in person. Oh, my God. Crazy. Yeah, it's that, that like, is it's, nuts. Like, you know how good LeBron James is as a basketball player, but to see him on the court, like, granted, you're, like, 100 feet away, but just to see... Especially now with the Lakers that, like, since, ever since he joined the Lakers, like, he's the guy, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like with Harden. It's exactly. Like, it's like exactly. he runs everything. But long story short short where i'm getting to is uh this is all fine and dandy dylan right barkley center nets versus lakers it was cool the brooklyn nets dancers but uh but there was something kind of cool about this game in particular and that was that this game celebrated the end of the chinese lunar new year or rather the beginning of the chinese lunar new year you know the the big event yeah uh, which was really cool because there was tons of Chinese representation throughout the game. Oh, nice. Uh, they had a Chinese dance crew. They had a lot of Chinese influencers on TikTok come in and do stuff like that. Okay. They had representation from fans that live in China who like, cool. are fans of the Brooklyn Ch Nets. China, honestly, Chinese but, people love basketball. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. you kidding me? It's like a huge Stephon Marbury! Mar he's the king out yeah. there. 
But if you're like me and a fan of just humor in general, then you would have really enjoyed being at that game because it got to mean that you got to watch the entire Brooklyn Nets roster attempt to speak Chinese in segments uh, between the games. So, you know, when Which, you're at home watching this no, shit on no, TV, no, no, you no, don't no, see no, it. No, no, no. no. But, that, when you're at, fucking funny. but when you're in the stadium and you're watching Joe Harris try to uh, say Happy New Year in Chinese and Kevin Durant try to say happy blessed year of the tiger it's fucking hilarious it's great that i remember you i remember like you telling a story which the mets did this all the time because uh-huh. a lot of baseball players are spanish yeah so it's like are they you know if they're from south america and shit so it's are they dr so it's like they just teach you spanish in the yeah, middle yeah. of the game and i'm like Zapato. yeah exactly but it's not that awkward <laughs> because they're spanish, they're spanish. <laughs> yeah, so, so imagine like you know a full roster of the brooklyn <laughs> Nets. Blake Griffin, no. yeah, exactly he was the main guy he was the. <laughs> and, no, it's funny you bring that up because I, I I totally forgot I, I should have I forgot I was gonna mention That's this. So funny. So you know me and my dad are cracking up because it's mad yeah. funny. But then at one point they do this segment where they ask all of the Brooklyn Nets roster like what's their favorite Chinese food options and then they give them two and they have to pick wings and fries, baby. Yeah, right. No, but it's like <laughs> it's like General Sows or like uh, or like dim sum. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dumplings or fries. There's different. Rice. There's yeah, the yeah. ramen and what's uh, happening. So the first yeah. thing I wanted to mention is Blake Griffin. Out of all of them, like they asked the whole entire team, Joe Harris, Nick Claxton, James Harden, and every time they asked them, every single team member is just like, I'm going with dumplings. I'm going go with pineapple chicken. I'm Blake Griffin goes on for like a minute every time he picks one. <laughs> like the biggest fucking foodie in the world. He's like, oh, I had both of those last night, man. Uh, honestly, if it's like a good day, I'm going to go Blake with the Griffin's roasted so duck. Cool, yeah, it's, he goes on this full tangent. Like I love him. Blake Wait, Griffin. he did Hot Ones, right? I think he did, right? Did he? I yeah, think I, th- so. yeah. I, 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 I just I have it in my mind yeah. of him doing it. But, like, but it was he, mad funny. Yeah, but the other good. thing to mention about it was <clears throat> we're watching this, right? And it's like on the big Jumbotron. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody, for some reason, on the entire team, their audio sucks dick. Like with all the problems that we just went through, the like the audio that we listened we to do, before we do, this, we should be the event staff. I told my dad, I was like, like Loki could have probably done a better job, but for some reason, Blake Griffin was fucking crystal clear. So I don't he probably know. had his whole crew coming or something. I was I like, did they film this at home or some shit like that on like a green screen? Because every they time just... they have Blake Griffin, it's like crystal clear, and then when they have like Nick Claxton or something, Charles. it's like. <laughs> For fried rice, it's like the worst thing. It was well, crazy. Well, maybe that's why they had Blake Griffin go on for a minute because yeah, <laughs> yeah, they right. had good audio. They had good audio. That sounds good. Keep it. Keep it. Where it's like, or maybe with the other guy, all of the audio was unusable, but the food was usable. Yeah, so yeah, it just yeah. pineapple chicken <laughs> just goes on. But yeah, it was a cool experience. That's fun, man. LeBron I, James. I assume uh, they lost the Nets. We did very yeah. much lose. It was mainly because we kept Durant out. You know, he's gone for like two weeks with injury, mm-hmm. so. That being said, both LeBron and Harden played ridiculous Oh, games. for sure, yeah. Like that's they, I, I don't know if LeBron got one, but Harden got a triple-double, which is the second triple-double I've gotten to see him got get. He, he, it's just seamless. Like It's crazy. Yeah, which, like, you know, back in the day, you would see people get double-doubles. Yeah. You know, that happens, but triple. Not only that, I was talking shit about Russell Westbrook on the walk-in because he – Westbrook, because he's been on kind of like a – almost like a decline. Yeah. He went on a fucking tangent that night. Yeah. And it was funny because my dad's a big Westbrook fan, so he was like, I can't wait to see him and i told him i was like i just hope he's playing good and sure enough i was like he's fucking playing good uh yeah well it's like what yeah well westbrook was like his main thing was like he would always try to do everything himself mm-hmm. that was always his main criticism yeah, yeah. but he's all he's solid but that's always. why he has all the triple doubles to yeah. fucking prove it you know yeah, he's like hey I, you know he's and this playing. guy carmelo was a man was a fucking monster yeah. instead which like at this point like yeah like mm-hmm. crazy no yeah but yeah, we both watched some sports. Oh yeah, and I just want to say that like I I was also gonna hint, hint on like watching the game on TV versus in person. It's so like you know it's if, a way different. Yeah, experience. yeah, yeah. And for people, I know I know there's some people who like don't like even if you're not into sports. Like I know no, you're not the biggest sports guy. Going to see a sport in person is so much better. Fun, yeah. It's a way. Like yeah. I was I was telling like I was telling somebody at work about this that like you don't even in some cases like it feels like you don't even have to be a fan of basketball. But you'll still have a great time. No, because it, it's kind of like seeing like almost like a play where it's like these are talented people. This is yeah, their craft. This is their job. Yeah, yeah, they get paid a lot of money you to do this. You can tell these fucking people. It's do entertainment. This. You know yeah. what I mean? It's and not good. even that. Like even like sports aside, they always do shit like the in like the timeout shit. Yeah, there's always timeout. There's always something games going to on. laugh at something. 
to watch, something to Use comment the code on. to get a free taco or whatever. You People know? in fucking sports crowds can be fought hilarious. Oh yeah, it's a, yeah, it's fun. And even like uh like a bi- like one of some of the more boring sports, mm-hmm. like baseball, right? Kind of boring. I'll be the first to admit that yeah. as a baseball fan. But it gets a vibe, you it know. Is, you hang yeah. out, you make you a day talk. out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What know? was I gonna say? A lot yeah. of people tailgate. I don't tailgate, but a lot of people, you know, they get the they get the fucking football, they yeah. get the sausages, you know. Yeah. But like people tailgate at baseball, baseball games, games too. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah, like uh, what's it called? Um, like Flushing Meadow Park and like the mm, yeah, marina, like that. the marina area. Yeah, There's yeah, like a yeah, parking lot near there. Was gonna, last thing I was gonna say is that I made the crowd around me laugh. Now that I I had to put it in the chat, but I waited for a really like quiet moment in the second quarter. I think LeBron was going for a free throw or something, and I just turned to my dad and I said it really like, I sold that shit. Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit, Dad, that's the guy from Space Jam!" And everybody <laughs> around me was like, "Wow, that's funny." <laughs> it's a joke. I know fucking. Yeah. I know who LeBron Games is, but <laughs> but yeah, I mean, speaking of sports, uh, you and I are into another competitive scene that I think we're we're t- dipping our toes back into. And I, I, think, I I'm taking I'm making my return ever since uh I don't know 2015 I think, 2016. I think since you took the start on that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump the range. I, I mean, it also makes sense that you do take I'll the start this on this one, you know. by the horns, so, by the uh, by the joysticks, by the joysticks. Yeah, by the uh, by the by, dual, by the dual shock, by the dicks. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah. No, I, <laughs> not to cut you off, but I do have I do have like a funny thing. I had several people after I told them they referred to our our podcast or our show as Mister Dick, yep. and then now Team Penis. Team Pe- oh, we're Team Penis. <laughs> that, I think that's the rebrand. I think we changed the whole show. I think we repaint the beans. That's the, the that's the Patreon. The pa- Team Penis. The eighteen plus Patreon. Yeah. We team up with Come Town. Oh my a god! Lot of potential yeah. There. Thanks, guy, who gave us our new name. Yeah. No, fucking uh, me and Dylan have been kind of slowly but surely getting back into the speed running scene. Which we've talked about before. We but. have, yeah. But, you know, I guess. So, for me, at least, I think it was kind of like this resurgence of, like, AGDQ happening early that you watch a lot of runs and you kind of just get back into watching runs in Yeah, general. and also I, I just more, like, even in the background. Like, yeah. I'll watch. I have, like, I follow all of those streamers. Mm-hmm. And they a lot of them still do stream. So, like, I know mainly I watch, like, Asan or I watch you, right, when, yeah, when yeah. you're streaming. But, you know, I look at my following and it's all speedrunners. Speed yeah, and it's like yeah. guys going for like Super Mario 64 records still and yeah. like fucking Darbian, who's like a classic guy. I mean, he blew up. Mm-hmm. But good stuff. My my two main games, and I guess we'll talk a little bit yeah. about the games that we speedrun in a bit. But my two big main games that I always used to run were Sly Cooper and a game I'll get to in a second. I mean, the game, I feel like the game that you're going to get to in a second is more important, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's so the reason I so believe it or not, out of the two, I've always enjoyed Sly Cooper more because Sly Cooper, I just find a more fun game in terms of like the movement. And it's just there's just more like uh, which to for those who don't know, Raccoon, he's a thief. He jumps on stuff. Yeah. Jump platformer ac- kind of yeah. action adventure a little exactly. bit. too. Yeah. But yeah, the reason I like it is just like, I guess there's a lot more variety to it. You're doing a lot more sure. stuff, you know, you, even besides like the movement, there's like levels where you're on vehicles and world breaking skips shit like that yeah. and that's always been fun for me but it wasn't the first game i started oh, speed shout. Running. the first game i started speed running was a little indie 2d platformer called super meat boy uh and i started running that game in 2013 which is a stupid long time ago yeah. and it also like has a very big scene for what it is you know yeah. what i mean it's it's honestly one of the more popular speed runs in general because i i think some of that well obviously some of the hype has died down it's, it's so it's such an old game at this point but at the time, Super Meat Boy was known to be one of the harder platformers. And to, it's super satisfying, of course, to watch someone play a really fast, a really hard game really fast. Really fast, yeah. yeah, because... And to tell you the truth, the way I got into running it was I loved the game, naturally. It took yeah. me days and days to beat it, to mm-hmm. get everything, because the game is so fucking difficult. Yeah. And then, like, after beating it, something just in me wanted to keep playing it. So I would just play mm. the levels as fast nice. as I could to see how I could. And this is way before I even knew, like, what the whole organized speed running system was like mm-hmm. with marathons and with shit the like that. Like, I knew what it was, but yeah. I didn't know what the people were doing it this seriously. So eventually that's when I learned the route and I did, you know, the real run and shit like that. And, and you had to myself. practice, you know, tech and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. And where I'm getting to now is, uh, is last night I was really bored. I, I just didn't have anything to do. And it's not uncommon for me to boot up meat boy. Like I do it just to like make my hands move. I do it with melee all the time. It's a weird thing to do, but I just like to move. It's a warm up, yeah. It's like a dexterity thing, I guess. 
I mean, fidget people yeah, are fidget yeah, yeah, toys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. But for some reason, in my head, I was like, I wonder what the new you know route looks like nowadays. And I think the record was being like seven months ago or something like that. Warple. So no, it was the new guy. I know, but I'm saying he had it. Oh, Warple was the yeah. legend for for now. It's Matt, but. Long story short, the record was broken. I saw the record. I saw the new route. The strats looked daunting, but I was like, let me try them. Yeah. I practiced them for about 30 minutes, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I nailed them like nice. in that amount of time. I was almost surprised myself with how quick I could come back into the game. Mm. I did a run for shits and giggles, and it was very sloppy, but it clocked in at like 23, 40-something, which I checked and does place me at like 120th place out of like the 500-plus people who play the game. But I mean, in the minute that I could easily shave off because of all like the stupid shit that I was doing, because I've, I've even had quicker times than that when I used to run the game without mm-hmm. the route, I would be in the top 60. Of course. And yeah. I could push myself to be like the top 30, honestly. Speaking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. So long story short, I'm going to be pushing myself to become. Which, by the way, it looks so it, not to make fun of people who, who do that. Like it's, it's because it's the whole point. It's like you Get work better, your way yeah, up. Yeah. Right. And you like use that to motivate yourself. But you see that sometimes in like the really popular games where it's like someone uploaded, you know, it's on this uh, website and you even see it. It's like, oh, this per Chris uploaded a time. It's 541st. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, wow, that's, you know, but. But no, that's progress. like, exactly. Yeah. And it's cool to see it too because then you see it and sometimes you see a game and you're like, I wonder what the fuck that run looks like. You know what I mean? But regardless, I'm getting back into it. And my goal with running nowadays is I do want to get back into it. I want to get serious about it. But being realistic, I don't have the time to put in to get like a world record, at least not in like anything big time. But I do want to push myself to put myself in like good categories that I see fit for myself. Yeah, 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 for sure. So like, I mean, if I could break like the top 20 and sly, that'd be fucking sick. And I'd be happy with that. And I could definitely do it. So that's where I that's where my goals lie in speed running from now on. Mm, but I passing like it over to you, buddy, I'm excited to hear what you got to say about this topic. Yeah. So firstly, I made a speedrun.com account. Yeah. Had had to happen because that I feel like that would motivate me. Yeah. Because I really don't. I it's running is fun, but I never track anything really. It's not. Yeah. You never. <clears> like I have, I have a few recordings. Yeah. I remember I had that, and I also had another recording. I don't know if it got lost or it was like a Twitch vod that went away, but I had a couple of games I ran. Um, I ended up running Game Boy Color games because yeah. I had a game. I, I was running things on a laptop and nothing better than like N64 I would run on the Ooh, laptop. Yeah, yeah. So I'd play Game Boy Color games mm-hmm. and Game Boy Advance and stuff like that. And just real quick, so if I could cut you off for one yeah. second, speedrun.com is a great resource. If you don't know what speedrunning is, if you're interested yeah. in speedrunning. Back in the day, speedruns live was really yeah, good. Yeah, not all, and it's still up. But yeah. speedrun.com, if it's just the best resource for it. Not yeah. only are there guides of how to get into speedrunning yourself and how like splits work and all that shit, but every game is listed there, organized. Every, and, and, and especially nowadays, it's so refined that you can't upload without um you know video yeah back in the day you would be able to upload without video and then you would have to you would have like a certain amount of time to prove it yeah yeah, yeah. whereas now it's like you need a video if it doesn't have in-game time you need splits on screen that's live with the thing it needs to be most of the time from a twitch stream or a vod you know and what was I going to say? Fucking uh and the the search system is great because you could literally go to that bar type any game you've ever been interested in the whole series will pop up. You can pick the game, and then it'll show you the full leaderboard, guides on how to run the game, Rules. resources. You could even get, like, the world record splits to race again in some and there, cases. And also so. a very important part of speedrunning is that a lot of people come up with very different subcategories yeah. and, you know, different types of, you know, ways of branches, being, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Low percent, 100, no, coinless, all, all blank. No death. You know, um, I was watching a speedrun. I was watching a guy. His name is Echidisis, maybe. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he he he's done AGDQ for years. He's mm-hmm. like one of their main guys like, in the pocket. Him. Um, and he runs over a hundred games. Jesus. But they're all horror games. Yeah, that reminds and, me of this guy, the Mexican runner. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. He used to run like a thousand NES. Oh games or like yeah, that. he was great. Yeah. Um, but basically, this guy he runs all mainly horror and spooky stuff, and he was running Dead Rising two off the record. Which in that game, all the people don't run the game because most of the game is on a timer. Got Essentially, it. how the Dead Rising games work is basically you're stuck in a mall for 72 hours. Mm-hmm. Dead Rising 2, you're stuck in Vegas for 72 hours. Got it. So it's kind of like you have to sleep and skip time. And it's like there's ways where it's like a lot. The run's kind of boring. Got it. So basically what they do is they modded the game 
so that you do everything from level two uh-huh. and you beat all the bosses back to back to back. <laughs> and it's like the craziest run I've ever seen. But what's cool about that too is speedrunning is so cool nowadays that if a, if a community finds that the game that they like is just not in the position yeah. to be run because of stupid shit like that, they will find yeah. a workaround to just make yeah. the run hype again. Yeah, they'll and mod the game. And then before you know the... it, that'll be like the new run. Yeah. Like, no, even if it's a new run, And then run, even in like, a game like about. Rocket League, which is like a, it's a competitive sports game. Which, which I, doesn't really have a speedrun besides the yeah. what? Like the campaign. Yeah, and which, it. by the way, every game is five minutes. Yeah. What do you do? Score one goal and then defend? Like, yeah, that's exactly. like the most boring thing ever. But, um, uh, what was I going to say? The yeah. maps. Yeah, yeah. So now people have different maps. There's races. There's checkpoint maps. Ball there's dribbles. Yeah, and yeah. All every, everything. All the hypes, the different challenges. Yeah, exactly. There was a former pro player, which I'll go on a quick tangent. I kind of like speedrunning too because it's like competitive, but it's with yourself, yourself. That's and then and then it. you can bring people in if you want exactly. and there's a community that's more supportive than competitive and even then races never feel competitive no they're always they fun feel, exactly especially on ag because you never get the chance to do that in speed running so it's always like a, a fun experience but with rocket league there was a pro player by the name of lethemir who literally created every other sport in rocket league oh wow so he created like actual volleyball Crazy. he created maps where it's like there's like eight levels and you have to cross through all eight and there's like four on each side. So it's almost like a tug of war. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like, there's like each, so basically there's like a hole in the wall and you have to get the ball through hole each hole. in the wall. Sorry. I just wanted to jump over that. Yeah. But yeah, it's like a, you know, um, communities just find a way to be as creative as possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's really cool. You know, uh, uh, I'm getting ready for some races. Races with you. Oh, are you down? I was going to say we should learn a, a game. We though. should learn a game. <laughs> As a joke, I was going to say we should learn the Super Mario 3D All-Stars 360, <laughs> which is one tw- which is 120 stars, 120 stars, 120 stars. In 64? In 64, Sunshine and Galaxy. Oh, shit. You 100% everything. Dylan, we can't do that. No, I will not because it's a 15-hour run. I was about to say. But... There's all, but I mean, know, to be I, fair, I'd race only, you in a 70 star of I was SM64. gonna say the only run that you and I share is Super Mario 64 16 star, but I'm saying maybe we should learn 70. I'm down, it's yeah. a popular run, we could do content about it yeah. too. People would watch it, or you know, or we play 70 without the glitch because there is like people don't really run the all star games, they run all three, yeah, yeah like yeah, people yeah. don't run just one, but we could do Let's like an emulator, we could do any percent of N64. With the, with now with the new one which is seventy yeah. essentially, but that doesn't use BLJ or anything like that. So yeah, so it's kind of boring, but it's more like movement and shit, yeah, you know. Yeah. And you can still do like, the bomb clips and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But what was I gonna say? Um, before we get off the speedrunning tangent, I think it'd be interesting just to go down our list. Uh, this is hard. I mean, I have a bunch I forgot. You have about. a lot, so I think I'll just go down my quick ones real quick. Yeah. My speedrunning games, as I said, were Super Mario sixty four, Super Meat Boy, Sly Cooper. And uh, weirdly enough, Tony Hawk's Underground 2. That's a good one. It's pretty sick of that game, actually. That's a very good one. Uh, but other than that, I think those are the only games I speed ran. Dylan is literally probably looking at a list of 16 at the moment, something like that. I'll get started for Dylan. Okay. Uh, I was going to say all the Ouya games, <laughs> fucking American uh, capitalist or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. So I, okay, so there was a console called the Ouya, and I ran every game on that shit. They all had PC ports, yeah. which I wanted to run, but I, you know what? It's not worth it. Yeah. They're like hard. To f- some of them aren't even on Steam, yeah. and it's like I'm not even going to worry about that at that point. So I had an old memo from my old phone that transferred over when I transferred my shit. Uh, Super Mario 64, 16, and then I kind of learned 70, but it wasn't good. And then uh, I ran uh, Super Mario Brothers, the warps, and I, you know, I my time was like a, a minute higher than people who like got that game down like fractions of a mm-hmm. second uh Stuart little two that's like your game uh in my eyes that was a time game. trials and steep which i didn't say i had like 20 records in steep no mm-hmm. joke yeah no, I don't. yeah i was very good at that game um mission impossible for the game boy color it's another one of your classics i ran mission impossible for the n64 i don't know if i've ever said that oh, i didn't know that no um survival kids which is a great game wow, boy color I game about survival which kids. by the way uh there's a lot of it's actually a good run mm-hmm. like i like you know it's kind of like minecraft you got to survive on an island but it's also like pokemon because it's like over the top yeah. um what else do i have written here uh boy and his blob old one Classic, and the new one yep, yep. by the the new one also has a good run so I Is ran it that as short. No, Got definitely it. not. By the way, it's a two minute run. It's two minute run. Yeah. 
Uh, what else? Did I have anything else written? Oh, I technically also used to know how to speed run uh, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly because uh, it is famously like the worst speed run. It's literally like a 30 second run. Oh, no. Yeah. Is that the one where you glitch through yeah. or something? It's funny because like uh, the original run was Spyro used to go to a fence that he would normally need another power up to open. But you can cause enough lag by just running into the fence that Spyro runs through the fence. And then you can do a swim and air glitch, which is another game-breaking glitch. And then you would just f- swim right into the final boss and beat the game. Uh, and then if that wasn't enough, Amazing. they found out that you could go right to the final boss spot and just ground pound on a specific spot, and it, you just fall right through the floor. Oh my! So you don't even have God. to do any of the other shit. You could literally like just walk several, five feet and just go fight the boss. Like that, I feel so stupid. That, that it's just like, oh yeah, you're walking into the final boss. Yeah, it's <laughs> like know? okay, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, what but else yeah. do I run? I feel like I, there's more. Oh, so the main motivation, I didn't say this before, but what motivated me too was everyone rocked my records. Mm-hmm. You know I what I mean? Stuart Little 2. Yeah, one. so Stuart Little 2, there's like six people running the game. And the, in fact, there's two Australian guys who are going back and back, which I'm just assuming is hysterical. They're calling each other a cunt the entire time. You which know? is super normal for Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit that's, is like calling each other like pal out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I find hysterical, which yeah. is like kind of, you know, cool, I think. It is. But um, yeah, and even like survival kids, I would be like. I would still be like sixth or seventh, right? Mm-hmm. But there's like 20 people that ran in that game. I didn't even know that. And there was a game I ran, which I never said, but I ran X Men Wolverine's Rage, also for the Game Boy Color. Interesting. And there is a guy who's been going ham on that game. <laughs> and I think he watched the test and he like basically almost recreated the test. Like it was a good run. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I'm not even going to run that game. That guy has a good record. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Speed running, bro. Cool stuff. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I guess now we get into. Uh... Well, I guess before we get into that final tangent, I just wanted to talk about my life for a second. We are filming this. Like, what? I can't talk about my fucking life? Yeah, I was, I was, it's a joke. I was acting like no one cares, but oh, obviously yeah. we care. No, I was just going to say that we're filming this on a Thursday, really late at night, actually. It's yeah. one of the later times that we do this. I think it's like almost 11.23. 11, 11, yeah. There you go. But the reason we're filming this so early in the week is because next week, from Monday to Wednesday, I unfortunately have to stay overnight in the hospital, which mm-hmm. sucks t- like huge dick. Uh, giant. No need to fret. I'm perfectly fine. I'm okay. It's to you know fix my brain because mm-hmm. as if you follow the podcast, I do have some seizure stuff that goes on. We don't mm-hmm. know what's causing. And not it. only do they get the do that, but they watch you overnight. Yeah, pretty. They're much. definitely gonna have someone like just be like watching me. Yeah, you know it. Uh, Love some good notes. Off the record, we'll be uh, sneaking a pen into the hospital <laughs> to uh, keep myself occupied. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean a, a pen. I think a little I'll, bit, a little bit. You need a it. pen, laptop, switch. I'll think I'll be good with with. Oh, that, oh with switch that trio. for sure. Hey, learn learn some seventy star. Yeah, right. Yeah. Not, not a bad idea. <laughs> or any uh, other game on Switch. There's other games on and Switch. And what you call it? Um, I'm just doing an EEG, which was the thing I did on the show, for like episode. I don't remember when it was 11 or 12 mm-hmm. when I was strapped to all those machines, but I have to do it for two nights in the hospital so that they can monitor me and all that jazz. Uh, also, interestingly enough, I did a PET scan slash MRI for my brain and I never had a PET scan done before and it actually showed up some stuff. So I had nice. some, some results came Interesting. up. Interesting. Apparently there's some abnormalities in my temporal lobe, which sounds like some sci-fi shit. But it no, is that's actually something in my body. Yeah, so. that, that's, temp- that's, a, that's, a, that's a body part of the brain. Yep. Uh, as someone who took psychology for a year in college, I know I know quite a bit about the brain. Surprisingly, mm-hmm. you know, like they teach as you, someone with a brain. Yeah, you know about you know about the hippocampus, right? Nope. So the is hippoc- that where the hippos live? No. So is that where they go to school? No. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? The hippocampus is what stores memories. Yeah. So you'd remember if there was a hippo on campus. Don't do this to me, Dylan. I'm already fucked up. <laughs> 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 My brain's already broken. <laughs> you're like you're gonna, you're gonna dream of a fucking zoo tomorrow, like a safari. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to slip that in there before I get into this last little numbo jumbo tap a tumbo crumbo. I don't know what the fuck I'm even talking about. But yeah, damn, I actually had a, you know, I, I, wait, no, never mind. What were you gonna fucking say? No, forget, forget about it. Okay, we're scrapping yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah, off yeah, the yeah. record. Yeah. Dylan forgets about it. Yeah. Anyway. I was going to say, I've been watching some uh, some cartoons lately, yeah. which is why I asked you beautiful people out there what some of your favorite cartoons might be. Yeah, because now as, we're getting into it. As I've gotten older, I've realized two things. Mm-hmm. I've realized that less people my age like cartoons, which is understandable, but I think people uh, underestimate them. 
just because a show is animated doesn't mean that it can't be a fucking work of art. Yeah, you know or I mean? adult or cause exactly. you know, that's also the, the people think, oh, it's a child exactly, like, baby sure. baby stuff. Um the other thing I've noticed is that the older I get, the more I uh come to not only better understand but actually genuinely come to love the cartoons i grew up with that were a little bit too mature for me at the time hmm. shows like avatar the last airbender that That's you know good. it's yeah. at the time you know when, when we were younger it was a cool action show but then you rewatch it again as an adult and there's so much packed in there so much emotion mm-hmm. so much amazing writing and it's like holy shit this is all from a fucking a western anime not yeah. even made in asia practically mm-hmm. uh so where I'm getting to with this is uh, a couple shows. I guess the first one I want to talk about is Young Justice. Yeah. But not because I want to talk about like where the show is now particularly. Uh, I just want, I think like the history of the show is pretty interesting. And it's a okay. show that I know you know that I like a lot. Yeah, yeah, but I don't yeah, know yeah. if you know. The I mean, I feel like I've stories. seen you like watch it. Yeah. You know? But do you know like the backstory behind Young no. Justice? So here's the funny part. Young Justice is on its fourth season right now. Okay. It's actually in the middle of its fourth season. The way that they do it now is they release the first 13 episodes, and then they, they usually wait like a three, four-month period, and they come back with the last half of the season. Okay. So that's a lot. 26 episodes. Yeah, that's a long season, season yeah. Uh, even though the show is on its fourth season, the first season premiered in 2010. So they take a while, you're saying? Uh, here's what happens. Oh, okay. <laughs> the show Young Justice premiered on Cartoon Network in 2010. Okay. When the show first came out, the major a lot of the money that went into the show's budget came from a toy deal that they had with a major toy company. I okay. don't remember specifically. It was like Hasbro or Mattel, Milton Bradley. Well, one, so of, one, of, one, one of those guys, yeah. Damn, you know a lot of toy brands. Let's yeah. go. I mean, I know them too, but that's, you know. The point is, is uh, right. they made a deal where the, the toy company would make action figures for the show. They would sell them alongside with the cartoon. Uh, so the first two seasons of the show came out in 2010, 2011, yeah. a decade ago. Uh, after the second season, nobody was buying the toys, hmm. so they lost the toy brand deal. Therefore, they lost the money, and the show was canceled after season two. Interesting. Here's the problem with that. The show's fucking incredible. Okay. Which probably has a, a big deal to do with why the toys didn't sell. Even though the show was put on Cartoon Network, I think ever since the beginning, the show's secretly been written for adults. It's okay. a very... With, the, with probably the exclusion of... More specifically, the first half of the first season, but to a bigger extension, the entire first season. The rest of the show, season two onward, is very, like, super, like, I don't really think kids would be into it, to be honest. Okay. So, the, like, the like I said with the Avatar thing, the action sequences are cool. It's cool to see characters like Batman, Superman, Robin, Superboy on screen. But, like, the story arcs and the storylines that are going on are very convoluted and complex. It's not, it's not just a superhero Yeah, not show. only that, there's, like, major time skips. So, you get to watch these characters grow from, like, the ages of 14 to, like, 25. Oh, shit, yeah. So, it's, like, a really in-depth show. Yeah. Which probably, like I said, goes into a deal into why the kids didn't buy the toys and shit like that. So, can I ask, did it get canceled? It did get canceled because they didn't have the money. But, okay. naturally, fans of the show were like, hey. Yeah. Because the see the, the granted the second season didn't end on a cliffhanger, it did end on a very big emotional note. So people were like, they wanted to see what goes further from here. Yeah. Like you know, like what we want to see what else goes on. Uh, and it finally got delivered like three or four years ago in 2018 or something like that. When finally, after all that time on HBO or no, it was DC Universe Online, they finally released season three of Young Justice. Mm. But the show did so well after season three because the show's really good that now they're making more seasons of the show. So it's like, nice. it took me fucking 12 years to get here, but finally I'm getting a, a continuation of the show I grew up watching when I was a kid. Is it better? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, that's not my question. Because so I'm, like, I'm not saying that the first two, because you said it was good, but... Yeah. Obviously, if we got can't, they didn't have the money, like you yeah, know, something's yeah. going on. Here's my th- my, and I want to mention this because it's gonna f- it's gonna segue fluidly into the other show I want to talk about. Uh, like a river. The first thing I wanted to say was the show season three when it first came back yeah. was good, but I noticed some things. I noticed like I noticed one thing that I'm gonna get to in a second, but the other thing I noticed was that. It felt like maybe because they didn't have the money, there there were like kind of workarounds they did where maybe the uh, show focused a little bit more on the show's cooler moments, like the dialogue and things like that, or the more emotionally investing moments, and not so much on the highly animated fighting sequences yeah. and stuff like that. Season four is fucking insane. Okay. Not only is the action incredible and the dialogue in, like sick as fuck, the emotional weight is on a way different scale oh, to the shit. point where like crazy shit is happening this season. Like definitely not for kids. Oh, and damn. on top of that, uh, 
uh, the action sequences aren't just incredible. They're really inventive. Like, without mm. spoiling anything, there was one I saw in an episode yesterday where, like, all the characters are fighting in the dark. And the only times that the characters are lit up is when, like, the swords clang or when guns are fired. And you see just, like, frames of, like, their bodies in the darkness. And it was, like, super cool. Oh, shit. So it's just cool to see that the animation department is actually doing creative stuff with the yeah. show. So I just wanted to bring that up because not only do I think the history of the show is really cool, but I like where with what they're doing with it now. And this is where I'm getting to with this. Okay. The second thing is that now Young Justice isn't on Cartoon Network anymore. It's on HBO Max. Okay. So they get those liberties. Oh, to, so they can do more. Exactly. You know, they could glorify the show up. Characters can die, things like that. You know what I mean? Characters oh. can have love scenes. Come on. Oh, I like. I see what you're doing here, buddy. That's pretty funny. You trying to steal my fucking? <laughs> yeah. Trying to steal my fucking joke? You mean my joke? You think you're so fuck? <laughs> you think you're so fucking cute, dude? Dylan, Dylan, I beat you. I beat you, though. <laughs> Dylan thinks he's so fucking funny with his stupid little candies. Anyway, this is pretty good. Enough. But anyway, like I was saying, not a good combo. I'm gonna wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely not eating that cookie. Like I was saying, though. I think we talked about this on the last podcast, too, about things we grew up with mm-hmm. coming back, but in a different way for us now that we're adults. Okay. And there's something really cool about cartoons like Young Justice returning to action on streaming services where they're given the liberty to, you know, be a little bit more adult, be a little more serious. Yeah. Which is where I'm getting to with Samurai fucking Jack. Okay. Okay. Did you ever watch Samurai Jack? No, Jackson? just to preface, I've never watched never Samurai Jack. One time, never watched it. So can I explain the premise of Samurai Jack to you? Please do. I don't want to go on a tangent. I'm definitely going to go on a tangent, but I'm going to try to speed run this shit. Just throw back to two chapters ago. Three chapters ago. Hockey game. <laughs> Basketball. You ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. Pre-Samurai Jack, right? His dad is an emperor in the Edo period of Japan. Uh, oh, even pre that. This is where it gets really, really cool. Okay. The beginning of time, the show addresses like the Big Bang, the, the creation of the world. Okay. When the world was created, a giant black mass was also created and sought to consume the universe. But three gods banded together to destroy him. Odin from Norse mythology, the Egyptian god Ra, and Rama, who's a, a avatar of the, of the Hindu god Vish, Vishnu. Yeah, Vishnu, yeah. The three of them came together to defeat him. And but secretly, a part of his body flung through the universe and landed. Okay, on. right off the fucking bat. Before you even keep yeah, going, yeah. what the fuck is this theology shit? Right? That's crazy. It gets like, really cool. So like first, like, like you're starting off with the beginning. You're beginning the show with the beginning with the time. beginning of time. So really quickly to preface where I'm going to with this show, Samurai yeah. Jack is one of the few shows I've done that does everything, okay. and in a way that's not overbearing or bad in okay. any sense of the way. Long story short, well, not long story short. A, bla- the, a piece of the black evil mass Short story medium Yeah Shoots through the universe And lands on a little planet called Earth That landing is the explosion that killed the dinosaurs It's also the primordial ooze that like the men came out of Yeah, oh, crazy shit, right? Crazy Um, But eventually in the Edo period of Japan There's an emperor who the black mass comes to his village Or like his, his empire to come take it over And he fights it to destroy it, he takes like this elixir, like a poison. He puts okay. it on an arrow and shoots it into the heart of like the creature in the woods. Because wherever the creature go, these big like ugly trees spawn and shit like that. All right. Uh, I'm, unknown, I'm, I'm yeah. imagining like like the mist from the island of Lost. Kind of a like, big spiky yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, trees. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, long. St- well, I gotta stop saying long story short because this is a very long story. Yeah. I'm not gonna get into the whole thing of Samurai Jack. I promise. It's just the beginning is the coolest part. Um, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get six yeah. minutes to fill out When fucking uh, <laughs> When the emperor shoots the arrow with the elixir on it It actually transforms the mass Instead of killing it and gives it life Okay And that's how the main villain of Samurai Jack is born Aku So he's basically He's formed out of the black mass Exactly He's literally Like the deepest darkest evil But given a personality Oh shit yeah. And the, fun, the cool thing about Samurai Jack Is Aku isn't like the typical villain He's an evil shape shifting maniacal villain but he's also hilarious oh that's in fact in later seasons of the show he falls into depression and he starts seeing a therapist who's just him in a different shape-shifted body like aku is mad cool as a villain. that's funny i mean that's that's great like he's also psychoanalytical yeah yeah. it's really cool but regardless that's how aku is born and the emperor uh almost dies to aku okay where where's our where's our boy Jack. Jack, I'm so like, there's no Jack. This is crazy. Jack is in his mother's stomach. Okay, 
the uh, the princess or the queen or whatever. I don't yeah. know. Empress. There you yeah. go. Uh, while the empire, while the emperor is fighting Aku, Aku bests him and like chains him to a tree or something like that. But one of the gods comes to help him and gives him a sword, like a katana that's able to kill Aku and he's able to seal Aku in the sword. And then he puts the sword away. Okay. Jack is born. Jack hears the tale of Aku and how evil he was. And then when he's like eight years old or something like that, Aku comes back because of like an eclipse in the moon or something. Okay. Like that. And he comes out of the sword or whatever. Uh, the emperor goes back to get the sword to beat him, but Aku gets him this time and captures him. But they have this whole like plan that if Aku comes back, okay. the plan is that the emperor and the empress are going to put Jack on a boat and just send him around the world, like get him as far away from them as possible. Okay. So from the ages of like eight to 25, Jack travels from like Japan to fucking Egypt to Mongolia to Russia to to Britain to fucking Africa and he learns all these skills along the way. So each place has a different skill. Exactly. That's that's insane. He yeah. learns like astrology on the boat in Japan, he learns pole fighting in Africa, he learns how to ride horses from a sheik in Arabia. Fucking he crazy. He learns how, how to read languages in Egypt. Uh, he like, learns yeah, fucking he, he trains in a Shaolin temple in China, like all this crazy shit. So this guy is built to be like the Does fucking Does any like Swedish guy. shit? Like Norse? Uh, Anything like that? Or a no? little bit later. Well, okay. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, I'm trying to... Because oh, I was saying, because they use the Norse god, so I was curious about it. He it. does... Uh, the last thing he does, I think, before he goes to the Shaolin Temple is he rides on a Viking ship to Russia or something oh, like that. Oh, that's so cool. And yeah. he learns the, the ways of seamanship there. Like, oh. he learns how to ride boats and all oh, that okay, stuff. okay, yeah. So he that's learned, what he learns. Okay. Yeah, he does. And like the, okay, that's um, cool. But long story short, he goes to all these fucking places. He returns. He fights Aku. But the, la and the last thing I should say is this is actually the movie Samurai Jack. So a lot like a lot of other cartoons back in the day. It they started a with a movie. And it started a show. Oh, okay. So the movie is about the whole origin story of Jack. But right before Jack is about to finally kill Aku, Aku sends him through a portal through time and sends Jack like 3,000 years ahead in the future. And Jack wakes up in 4,000 AD, which is the start of the Samurai show. Jack. Yeah. Holy so shit. So the show is literally about this guy who's trained his entire life to be this samurai who gets transported to 4,000 like 80 in the future with flying cars where Aku is successfully the emperor of the world. <laughs> and and if that's not enough, the time portal that sent Jack into the future has made him immortal. So Jack lives there for like 50 fucking years and meets all these people and goes on all these crazy adventures, which is where I was going back to that the show does everything. Okay. It does time I mean, travel stuff. It does supernatural I mean, it's in the future. stuff. It's crazy. Anything, yeah. yeah. And then, like I also said, Adult Swim picked it up for a season five because the show never got its uh, its proper ending. So they brought it back to season five on Adult Swim. It was way adultified. There were gory fight scenes and shit like that. Oh, but damn. it was a beautiful ending to the show, and it was incredible. So it's just a really great, like, I'm just excited to see more things like that. Yeah. Hey, cartoons, don't be all child shit. It's the truth. Yeah. Like and that. also, give cartoons a shot. Also, I think that, like... I think when you do something like the future, mm -hmm. it's so much better if it's animated. Yeah. Because you can do so much. You can take much more liberties. Yeah. You can, like, draw extra shit and, like, you know, creativity stuff. Whereas, like, you only have, like, CGI and mm -hmm. stuff, you know? And, and last but not least, this is promise the last thing I'm going to say about Samurai Jack. And I'll, honestly, I'm probably going to show you a video about this after this. Yeah. Um, there's a, a really cool video that highlights, honestly, one of the most beautiful things about the show. And okay. it's how simplistic the design is. In fact, there's a lot of fight scenes in Samurai Jack that can be just two colors oh damn where it's like they're fighting in nothingness it's just a really beautifully drawn hmm. show to the point where like the show doesn't need fancy graphics or it doesn't even need a lot on screen for you to look at it and be like wow that's fucking awesome ironically enough some of the most beautiful movies are those japanese samurai films yeah, too right. like like shot wise yeah like, so that's it captures cool. a lot of that it's pretty cool from the guy who made powerpuff girls so. very very nice yeah very nice and in fact believe it or not they exist in the same universe that's very cool. And they're also both like semi superheroes, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. So they, there's like the really same cool. billboards in both cartoons. In fact, in the Samurai Jack one, it's like a dilapidated billboard because it's like hundreds of years old. Or oh, oh, wow. Yeah, so that's that's cool. pretty cool. Yeah. Very nice. That, that's what I had to say about some grown up I want to watch some fucking cartoons now. Yeah, right? Yeah. They're pretty fun. Which I've given like adult cartoon, like, you know, the adult adult cartoons. Like, yeah, the, yeah. like adult South animated Park cartoons. Family and Guy. And then Birds, like, all that shit. also, like, Adult Swim's always good. Yeah. Like, so whether it's child stuff on, like, you know, middling stuff on Adult Swim or, like, the bad stuff, so, like, Aqua Teen or whatever, like, it's good stuff all Even the way. Even when they play, like, the old stuff, it's still great, like, oh, Aqua yeah. Teen, Heart, Birdman, and shit like that. 
Birdman is ma- I never watched it. Like that was one that and like Squid Billies and yeah, stuff yeah. I never watched. But all those shows are fucking hysterical. Birdman's fucking funny. <laughs> Birdman's so funny. Birdman, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. All those shows are funny because they're the most surreal things on the world. It's like why the fuck is Birdman a lawyer yeah, for yeah, other yeah, cartoon yeah, yeah. characters? Yeah, yeah. And it's like why yeah. is Space Ghost? There's like weird breaks. They break the fo- Moby. They break the fourth wall. They bring things from other universes. Yeah. It doesn't make any. There's no continuity. Not all. Great stuff. Sorry, that was my last miniature Oreo. That was really good. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm swimming through the adults. You know what I'm swimming through? What? Some Jans and some Yams. I know. Yeah. I realize. I just realized that horrible stroke. By the way, this is yeah, yeah. I, you can tell I swim because yeah, the way I'm doing it. I don't know what the fuck this is, but this is what I'm doing. I'm just I'm Moses in the tell, fucking can, ocean. No, you man. can tell you're a magician, I'm bro. <laughs> like you're just like, <laughs> you got the fingers, bro. You want to go first? Yeah, fuck it. Okay. My jam of the week is Cry Baby by Destroy Boys. Sick ass band from California. Okay. Uh, girl band. I think they have a male drummer. I don't think I don't know if he's like a main member of the band, but regardless, hmm. uh, female vocalist, female guitarist. Very angsty punk music. Okay. Just super punked out, and I just love it because their live music is very like, uh, it's just of uh, it's cognizant of not cognizant, but it's just like uh, it it reflects that like they're very vibrant, Energetic. in your face exactly, and they're like young that. too, which I like. They're like our age, which is cool. Um, yeah, I found them weirdly enough. I was just in one of those moods where I put on like an artist that I like, and then I put the radio on, and I just put on. I watched a video about how their industry <laughs> plants, but. That's funny. Those guys? Yeah. I believe it. I yeah, mean, yeah, I, yeah. But, I mean, they're good, so who cares? Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. It. At the end of the day, that, all that matters. But, yeah, shout-outs to Destroy Boys and Cry Baby. Yes. Also, last thing I want to say about them that's cool is they actually even have songs in Spanish because the I think they're also Spanish. Oh, that's really cool. So they have songs where, like, and they're still punked out. It's not like they're, like, Latin or anything, but, like, they go half-half where, like, they're literally yelling, like, Mi amo! Like, yeah. it's cool. But and can I just say that, like, Hispanic bikers and Hispanic punk people, they do it really well. Do they? Oh yeah, I yeah. oh I've seen like punked out people like you know at like um a lot of shows I go to like punk you know even pop punk it's like yeah, yeah. you'll see some like you know they're not wearing like a Blink One Eighty Two shirt you know yeah, like yeah. they're like all like black with like yeah, the yeah. shit yeah but yeah it's mine. yeah I'm gonna go in an opposite direction yeah because usually I'm the one that like I either pick like hyper pop or I go in like that punk kind of pop punky kind of alternative direction but I'll go I'll go straight hip hop here. Nice. But you taking know, over, taking over my yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, more like modern stuff. I'm gonna go with Arcadia, but Arcania, it was Arcania mm-hmm. by uh, MDMA. Oh. Very good song. I heard him through another artist. I remember one week I picked Uno the Activist, who's a really good rapper. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Who I found through a video where him and another guy play horse, which is very interesting. I, that channel's good. Um, I remember that was the one that you said like there was literally no interview. We should watch. It's a really. We should watch. It's like a four minute video and it's really good too we should watch it but um yeah really chill song there's like a slowed and reverb music which i didn't know there's a certain frequency that everyone does slow and reverb to now and it sounds Mm -hmm. way better it's like 452 hertz or something like that and it's like just like a good ear feel i guess it's like yeah it sounds like very like ethereal you know it has like just like you know like um dreamy yeah especially with songs that have like hi-hats the hi-hats get so slow that it's like the reverb on them is like perfect there's like no space between the drums it sounds really nice cool yeah so that's Jam and Yam of the Week. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and check out uh, Destroy Boys and MDMA. Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us for episode 75 of The Joystick Show. It Very just kind of hit me now. Yeah. Three quarters yeah, of the way Yeah, I said that earlier. That's I fucking know. wild. It's, uh, it's wild that we've been down here. Yeah. Different candles, different people, different paint now. Yeah. But lots more to go. We're not stopping here. Hell yeah. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, it would mean a great deal if you guys could subscribe. Yeah. If you guys could like, that'd help us. Like we also said, what's your favorite cartoon? Doesn't matter if it's adultified or not. Yeah. I'm just genuine. I'm, I like animated shows. Joey yeah, likes them. Yeah. I think me and Joey are the cartoon guys. I mean, I channel. also have, especially when I was younger. I only, you know, of course, you only watch cartoons. Do, yeah. yeah, and I still do. I mean, you know, I have some favorites. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, you know, me and Joey will definitely engage in some cartoon talk for sure. We're the we're the cartoon boys. Other than that, uh, do you have any final thoughts to share before we put a cap on episode seventy, Senko? I think we should answer the question. Answer the question? What well, favorite cartoon? What's our favorite cartoon? What's your favorite cartoon? Uh, I'm probably going to go with the classic SpongeBob. Oh, that's, um, that's good, fucking man. classic. But, and you know, there's um, 
Uh, second would be Home Movies, the first show by oh, Lauren yeah, Bouchard, yeah, yeah. who went, went on to make Bob's Burgers. It has that same energy, but that like crude style. Mm-hmm. Especially season one, it has like that Doctor Cat style, yeah, yeah, which uh, I do not like. But Squiggle season, Vision, yeah, yeah, Squiggle Vision. But season two, they move to like Flash, essentially. Yeah, so it's yeah. like it's way more like almost like a Newgrounds yeah, feel. Yeah. For me, I would probably say like an adult cartoon. I'm definitely a Family Guy fan. You know that. Love, love, my, love my family. family. That's so funny. I put say my what pant. You, say what, say what you want about the show. Big fan. I know way too much about it. I've seen yeah. it too many, too many times. Uh, on the kid version, very fond. Strangely enough, of uh, Kim Possible as well as Teen Titans. Love Kim Possible is good. Guys. That's Teen underrated. Great. I think. But that would be it for me. Okay. But other than that, uh, That's nice. call me, beat me if you want to reach me, if you want to page me. You don't, you don't know. It's that, it's that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs>